Welcome to Electron Online. Here's our next example of how to find the inverse Laplace transform of this particular function in the frequency domain. So here we have written the function 1 over s times s squared minus 1. So we can say that this can be written as the sum of two fractions as a over s plus bs plus c over s squared minus 1. We could have also written this as s plus 1 times s minus 1. So I'm going to do it both ways and show you that you can actually do it in those two different ways. But let's do it this way first. Which means that we need to find the values for a, b, and c. And what we can do is multiply both sides of the equation by the common denominator. So this becomes 1 is equal to a times s squared minus 1 plus bs plus c times s. Getting rid of the parentheses, this becomes 1 is equal to a s squared minus a plus b s squared plus c s. Which means that on the left side we don't have an s squared term, on the right side we have two of them, so we get 0 is equal to a plus b, the two coefficients of the s squared terms on the right side of the equation. We have one s term here, but we don't have one there, which means 0 is equal to the coefficient over here, c. And finally, we have 1 is equal to minus a. So we already have the value of these two, which means we can find b, since b is equal to minus a, which is minus a minus 1. That means b equals 1. So what we can do now is we can rewrite this function as follows. We can say now that f of s can now be written as a over s, a being negative 1, plus bs plus c, well c is 0, and b is 1, so that means s over s squared minus 1. So now we're going to take the inverse, the inverse Laplace transform. So we take that of minus 1 over s, plus s divided by s squared minus 1. To get the first one, we can take the minus out, and then the inverse transform of 1 over s would simply be the unit step function. So this becomes equal to u of t, with a minus sign in front of it, can't forget the minus sign, plus. Now if this was s over s squared minus, or I mean plus 1 instead of minus 1, then this, the inverse Laplace transform would be the cosine of omega t. But with the minus there, it's the hyperbolic cosine. So this becomes the hyperbolic cosine of omega t, with omega being 1, so simply the hyperbolic cosine of t. And this then becomes the inverse Laplace transform of that original equation. Now we did hint that there's another way in which we can do this. So let's put a line here, and let's explore the other method. So let's take this here and write it as uh, f of s is equal to 1 divided by s times s plus 1 times s minus 1. So actually write out the s squared minus 1 as the, the product of two binomials. Then this can be written as a over s plus b over s plus 1 plus c over s minus 1. And of course, again, we're going to multiply both sides of the equation by the common denominator of s times s plus 1 times s minus 1, which means that we get 1 is equal to a times s plus 1 times s minus 1 plus b times s times s minus 1 plus c times s times s plus 1. Working this out, we get the following. We get 1 is equal to, this will be s squared minus 1, so we get a s squared minus a. Here we get plus b s squared minus b times s. And here we get plus c s squared plus c times s. Doesn't look like it's a lot easier, but anyway, you can see that there are different methods. Collecting all the s squared terms, we can say that 0 is equal to a plus b plus c. The s terms, we have two of them. Here we can see that 0 is equal to minus b plus c, 
And finally, we have just one constant term. We can say that 1 equals minus a, which means that a is equal to minus 1. If we plug that in here, we can then say that 0 is equal to minus 1 plus b plus c, and 0 is equal to minus b plus c. Hmm. So what I can say here is that if I move the b across that b is equal to c, if I plug that into this equation, I can then say that 0 is equal to minus 1 plus c plus c, or 2c is equal to 1, or c is equal to 1 half. Since b is equal to c, that's also equal to 1 half. All right, now I'm ready to go ahead and plug that in here. So now I can take the inverse Laplace transform of this function with a, b, and c replaced by what they're equal to. So this is equal to minus 1 over s plus b. b is 1 half divided by s plus 1. And c is equal to 1 half divided by s minus 1. Now I'll go ahead and take the Laplace, inverse Laplace transform. So this is equal to minus the unit step function, so that's the same answer as before, plus 1 half times e to the minus t plus 1 half times e to the plus t. Hmm, at first it appears as if I did not get the same answer. However, if you look at this, you realize, well, that's the definition of the hyperbolic cosine of t. Therefore, this cannot be simplified as minus u of t plus the hyperbolic cosine of t. And so you can see that either way, you would have gotten the exact same answer. Again, it's probably easier to do it that way compared to this way, but you can see that there's different ways, different approaches to the very same problem. And that's why we did it that way.